Okay, so this is Julia from the Editing Julia, and um, I had a video showing how to make the heart uh, into a sachet, and it scared me. Not that it was bad, it's just that it was kind of unconventional to the point that there was really no reason. I was just kind of winging it while I did it. So that's not the best way to teach um, a, a sachet video. And I bet there is better ones online um, for sure. Uh, the Twisted Sister, is it Vana, who um, probably has something similar. One mistake I did do is um, next time I'm going to put the potpourri in um, like just a piece of fabric pouch. Uh, in, the, in slightly smaller than the shape, like in this case, a heart, uh, because the dust from the lavender and the um, walnut shell, shells uh, did get into my stitching. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't even want to show it for that. But basically, you would make, uh, you know, finish it off if you want to do a sachet somehow. Uh, use your common sense and you can probably do it as good of a job as I did this time and then put a ribbon one trick with the ribbon is you have to do the ribbon upside down if you're going to stitch through it um, but again I think you'll be able to find something better online so now let me show you how to uh, do the, the um, bullion stitch around the edge okay I have um, moved back over to my stitchy spot. I'll just tilt a second. There's the dog. There's the fire. It's about three o'clock and my husband is still over on the other side of the pass for work and I'm down to four logs for the fire. Might have to start burning furniture or put them on my snowshoes and go out to the actual uh, a wood pile which I don't want to do because it's nice and warm inside and on the deck but um, but yeah so I have done this I didn't put water to this uh, where I think some lavender dust got on the side I just have a um, bristly clean brush in my studio that I just kind of tried to brush off the dust uh, that's something you might want to think about um, I seriously consider just doing like a muslin stitched pouch of lavender to stick inside, which I think next time I will do so I don't have that problem of getting my white embroidery floss dirty. Um, I'm going to put an edge of a stitch on here, a bullion stitch that is easy um, and will be part of my playlist how to do it if you want to you certainly don't have to I mean at any point you didn't have to do the um, Algerian eyelet lace you could have just done the um, heart you also didn't have to do a sachet you know so hopefully there'll be a lot of different uh, very variables and variations to this and you'll the main thing is just you learn something new um, so I ran out of my uh, Classic Color Works uh, toasted marshmallow. So I grabbed some General Arts uh, cotton candy that definitely does have a little bit of a pink hue to it. So I thought that would be fine. Um, I'm still amazed that I was right in the ribbon. I mean, that's, that's the part that, you know, is amazing. So bullion stitch. So this is three strands. I just divided this in half. And I think starting probably at the point is a good idea. So um, get everything so you can see and I can see. Um, I do have a stitch collection on Pinterest on my Pinterest board you can follow me on Pinterest it is um, Facebook Pinterest Instagram are all moonflower muse um, you can also get to all my social media sites via my website which is moonflowerstudio.biz 
and I can hear the thoughts of why would I want to do this? You know, there's all this wonderful trim that now is available that people are hand dyeing trim, bringing back vintage trim. I agree. If I had a little mini trim, I might not do this either, but I don't. And I like doing these bullion stitches. I think they're fun. So, but I do use a thimble. So I'll just show you how I do it. And then, you know, it's again, one of those things that, um, to every, you know, you guys need to decide what is under the heading of fun and what is under the heading of, I don't think so. I need, so I have the thimble. All right, so a bullion, I'm in the center. I'm gonna go this direction. I'm going to just kind of pick a distance. And the reason I have a thimble is to help me push my needle through. I'm not gonna go all the way through. So I picked a distance from needle to needle. And now I'm going to wrap kind of like what I just think is a good distance of a loop. I'm kind of making loop-de-doos. I'm holding that coil in my finger Oh, and I went I for and then I'm gonna go back again to where I started. And that's a bullion stitch. Okay. I'm getting downright loopy in this uh, videotaping. So I'm trying to maintain. So I have done the bullion stitch around most of the edge because I like that. That, uh, that are available now, the little mini trims would be perfect. I don't have any of those and, and I can do the bullion stitch. So it's, you have to learn how to do it, but I mean, it's not, it's certainly something everyone could do if you chose to. So there's what it looks like with nothing. And then this is what it looks like if we put the bullion stitch on it. I need, I, I don't do it, it's like, it's like blanket stitch. I don't do it often enough to kind of remember. So then I really have to, um, uh, remind myself. All right. So for me, it's critical. You have a, th a thimble and a very long needle. So I'm, I'm coming up here or say, this is where you were starting. You're going to go whatever distance. Nope. I see. I'm already wrong. Cause I just went the other direction. Going underneath, you need to go away the distance you're wanting your little loop to do to be. So this is where that one is. This is where we're coming up. So that's the distance that I want to go. So then we're going to come back again and like make a loop with our needle. But then we're going to take the thread and whatever account you have, I'm doing 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's probably more than I need. I wrapped my needle. Now we're going to pull, I'm kind of pinching that coil of thread in my finger until I kind of pull all the thread out. So see, there's that coil that was on my needle. And now we're going to go back down where we started and then come up a little distance, whatever that distance ahead we're doing. And then 
Sometimes you have to lift it up a couple times to make it pretty. And that is a bullion stitch. So let's do it again. So I'm away from my starting point. I'm going to put my needle down and then come up where the thread is and I'm pushing if I get resistance I'm using that thimble to push my th needle through so then we have the needle like this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there are coils Push those down. I'm going to hold those coils in between my fingers. As I pull, and sometimes your thread gets all messed up. And then I'm going to let go. Try to make sure my coils kind of stay neat. I can kind of use my finger to help them. Go down, and then I'm going to come back up my distance away. And there's your bullion. So you just, it just is giving a little scallop edge. Okay, do it again. So, and I'm just I'm going in the seam in between the two um, pieces of fabric coming up the first time right where that thread is and then this is a long needle so I'm using my finger to kind of stick it out a little bit to help me coil one two three four five six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push it down. Hold that wrap with my finger. Pull it through. I'm kind of using my finger to kind of keep it pretty. Then I'm going to go in where I started and then come up the distance away I want. And there's a bullion. And it just makes this nice little scallopy edge. Okay, do another one. Go down. And if you kind of hit the back color fabric and get less of the stitching you've been doing, your needle goes through easier. Okay, pushing with my thumb to kind of make this stick out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push it down. Hold it between my finger and my thumb. Kind of help it with that finger. Go ahead, use my thimble. I got a little bit of a loop de do here. So sometimes if you just pull it out again and then pull it back in again, sometimes that helps if you have a loop that's kind of loose. Okay, I probably can get one or two more off of this. So go down, come up at my thread. Got to make sure I don't pull this out. So pay attention to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push it down.
I think we can get one more. Okay, so. Go down, come up where my thread is, get the ribbon out of the way, make sure I don't lose my tail, push that out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I don't think I have enough thread to do another one, so I'm going to back stitch in the gutter between the two pieces of fabric a couple times to secure this one. And then I'm just going to go in a long ways, come out anywhere. And then kind of pull it tight and then let that pop back in there okay so I am going to put another piece of thread on all right so I think I was over here I kind of went this way and then went that way because I had to remember how to do it so we are going to come up Pulling this enough where it disappears. And then I'm just going to go back and forth right here in the gutter a little bit to secure this new thread. If you hear noises, my dog is sleeping away at my feet. Okay. Actually, I think I was on the other side, which is fine. Yeah, I think we were stitching on the other side, actually. But we'll just turn to the other direction. Okay, so now we're going to go this direction because I was over here. So, oh, no, no, no. You want to, the, the, the kicker is when you come up, this is what messes me up. Don't come up next to this. You got to come up ahead because you're going to go backwards. So that's what mess. It's like it's like the blanket stitch. I always have to like re remember how to do a blanket stitch because I don't use it enough to remember. All right. So you're going to go towards what you've already done back to your um, where you started. That made no sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push it down. Hold it with your finger and your thumb. Hope you don't get a gigantic knot. Oh my goodness. Okay, I should show you if something happens where you have a boo-boo with bullion, the best thing to do is to unravel it. So you just need to go the opposite way, put something on the TV, sing a song. until you can kind of get it back to what you wanted. Mm -mm -mm. 
No, it's not bad. Okay. That'll work. Okay, so where were we at here? Go here. It's like gonna be a tiny little. I want to make ours a little bit bigger than that, so we're gonna go out a little bit farther. After all that, and the hardest you're gonna have the hardest time when your threads real long. Go here to here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And this top part of this heart is going to be the fiddliest. So scoot, scoot, scoot. Go down there, come up here. Okay, I think I want to have my ribbon behind the bullion. So I'm going to make sure my ribbon stays back, stays back here, well, in front, so I stitch the bullion in front of it is the plan right now it's just painfully in the way if I put it over like that maybe that'll help okay go down come up make sure everything is good one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push it down somehow with like my third hand. Get a hold of everything. No, no knots. No knots are loud. This in front, I don't think it really matters right now. Okay, this time it is going to matter. So we're going to go down here and we're going to go in front. So, see, I'm not, I'm definitely making sure that I go in front of that ribbon. Okay. So now. Go down, come up, come up, 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 right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push it down. Yeah, I'm this time I'm just going to hold that tight with that finger. Because that's all the fingers I have. Okay, it pop through. You can kind of let go and readjust. I'm holding onto the coil between my fingers. The ribbon should be behind. I don't think I have any knots. Kind of using my fingers. To help it kind of scoot down. Okay, so this is the tricky one. I'm going to come down and then I want to get like there. This is when that thimble greatly helps. So see how we're doing here. Not too bad. Not too bad. I think I can go a little far, more farther over than that. Which, hmm. Here we go. 
I want to get like not that far. You know, let's just do a big one. Yeah, the, it's so the thread is so thick here with all the things we've been doing there. I don't think you can do it without a thimble and a long needle and strong hands. Cuz definitely you need strong hands. This is not if your if your hands aren't great, then I do not suggest doing this. Okay. All right, so where are we here? All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The sun is shining through because it's about time for the sun to go down. And I am getting loopy. Gotta push this through more with my thimble. Okay. Situate everything. Just important that these coils, you don't have one on top of the other one and you can help them down with your finger. You want them just in a nice row. Squeezing them together while I pull. Getting that ribbon out of the way. Try in the wrong direction. Pull. Pushing them down. Okay, so then we have to come here and you know, feel free to cheat. See, I'm coming to the back, actually just straight through to get those secure. Get this out of the way. Now that's not gonna work because That's better. Actually, that did work. Okay, so I totally cheated by coming to the back. Because I just couldn't do that tight of a turn. And then I need to get the dog hair out of the way. So what do I need to do here? I need to be about like right there. So I'm there. If I stay in the purple, it'll be easier. There, I think if I'm there. Okay. All right. So I'm there. Actually, I think I can go a little farther ahead. We'll go to like right there. All right. There's a funny thing that happens in art about this time. You like start questioning your decisions of like, if this is a good thing you're doing this or this is a ridiculous thing that you're doing. Okay, the angle of this is so drastic 
Go there. Ooh, ooh, I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay. All right. Whew, we did it. Okay. Like I said, this is not for the week of hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push it down. Use your thimble if you need to. And usually you're not dealing with this tight of angles like you are in a heart. A heart has some pretty tight angles. Okay, so I'm gonna come here. Make sure I stay in front of the ribbon. I'm gonna go here. I honestly don't know how much of this I've actually sh made sure is on video. To there. How'd I do? Actually, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, that was the hard part. So now I'm going to go here to where my thread comes up. And then do my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Push it down. Hold that with my finger. Pull it through. Kind of help it go down, make it purty. Go back to where I started. Now here, I can get two more in. So I want to kind of make an even, even between. So there is that one. I'm going to pull it out a tad to kind of make it settle in better. Go here. And then to there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Push it down. And then we're going to go from here over to where this one started. Okay, now this last one, we're going to go from just one end to the other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, probably not even eleven because that's a pretty small space. Okay. Get them all pushed down as much as we can. And then shoot this off away. For that last one. And then do a couple back and forth in that gutter. to secure it and send it away. Pull a little extra tight. Okay, oh my goodness. And there we have 
<laughs> there we have, I don't know what this is. This is a, it's a Valentine's sachet with lavender inside. It smells wonderfully, but in this, in this free fractional freebie, if you so have chosen, you have learned how to do fractional stitches. You have learned how to do the couching stitch versus a back stitch. You have learned how to do an Algerian eyelet variation pattern. You have learned how to make a sachet with some potpourri inside, minus my mistake of getting the edge dirty, which I still might wash. I haven't decided I'm going to think about it. And you have learned how to do a bullion edge. Not too bad for a fractional freebie. Um, I don't do giveaways. I just periodically am going to get on and give you a free pattern and teach you something. That I'm going to hang somewhere for Valentine's Day. If I had the gumption, I would make another one and send them to my two daughters. I don't think I have the gumption right now to do that. I have other things I need to jump on for stitching. So, um, yep. Alrighty. So there you are. And, um, and we will talk to you later.